Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy, and as you can see, different place, um, no RJ. So, RJ and I have talked, and we've decided to resurrect the podcast and bring you all up to date. We've had a lot of questions about how things are going, what's changed. We haven't posted in a long time. Um, the thing that resurrected the podcast or brought upon this return is that I was asked to do a, a class for a virtual wool fest um, and of course I love that festival and with COVID and everything it's gone crazy so I did a virtual one and I remembered how much fun it was now things have really changed so I'm gonna bring you up to speed really quickly and just give you the short in our lives COVID turned out to be a positive thing um, as you know this started back when RJ was just a little guy and he blogged from the time he was 13 all the way up to oh I don't know just a few years ago um, either with the video or on his web page um, we have had a lot of things personally happen a lot of things that you know it, it's just life and and life changes so um with that said i'll bring y'all kind of up to date and where we're at now um so rj let's just skip to him real quick obviously we're not living together anymore um he lives at the farm with his father and i live about 30 miles away from them the original plan was to build the tiny house for me to live in but the tensions got so bad um the plan now has changed and that's going to be rj's house um we busted a hose i bought a new tractor and we busted a hydraulic hose on it yeah so um this spring we'll be finishing the uh, tiny house for rj me i've started a new journey and i am so much happier but fiber and the fiber world will always be a part of my life um so yeah um there is let's see there's so much to tell you first off with covid rj turned six months old in an oxygen tent he has permanent lung damage covid made us really shut down the farm and not have him exposed it's one of the reasons he was homeschooled is that way he doesn't um or isn't exposed to as much stuff he stays healthier um it just is what it is and when we last stopped podcasting i'm pretty sure everybody figured out that i had a job off the farm so rj was managing the farm he has decided to take it in a different direction um, without me there it's hard to keep up with all the shearing and all the animals and all that so he is in the midst of taking it into a horse training facility um, which is good he made the ACRA finals um, for those of you who keep up he had CWRA horse of the year he made the ACRA finals again this year um, and what I found is with me being more removed from the farm now I'm very very much still in the farm um, for personal reasons my name is still on the farm it will stay that way until RJ inherits it and then it will just be RJ's um, but that's a bunch of stuff that is a long story so anyway my name is still there I'm still a part of it uh, matter of fact I just got done running to go get bell boots and feed and so that kind of stuff is always going to be in my life and I'm always going to take care of my son to that note y'all know we bought the trailer that's mine I bought the trailer and at the time I bought it I was not living there um, RJ and I invested in a truck together so I own a trailer and half of a truck he uses it I never have even traveled in the truck and trailer never even driven the truck but it's what I can do to help him on his journey to being this amazing horse trainer which we all know he is um, he's pretty good at anything he puts his mind to so 
Um, he's still doing the rodeo thing. Uh, he is downsizing and all that kind of stuff. I still do my fiber stuff. I still make soaps. I still make um, the cheeses. The difference is, is that we're not doing it commercially. We're still living the same life. I'm just doing it from another house. So with that said, there's two things that's going to change. First off, I do have a roommate and that person will re be referred to as the roommate. I'm not going to infringe on anyone's privacy. Um, the house that we live in uh, is an old house. It was moved in as a two bedroom house. You could, they laugh because they said when it was first moved in that uh, it was, you could sit on the bed and wash your hands kind of thing <laughs> or cook breakfast. Uh, anyway, it's an old farmhouse. Uh, it is, sits on seven acres. And pretty much we're redoing the house as our rent so um, yeah we have had a lot of fun so far and we each have our own bedrooms we each have it, it's just an amazing setup and I'm happier so there's that RJ doesn't have to deal with the tension that was going on at the house um, don't think that this is a new development um, RJ's dad and I have not been close in probably mm, a decade, almost, almost 10 years. Um, but because of circumstances, I'm not willing to just up and leave my kids to have to deal with their dad. So um, we're still a family. We're still intertwined. I just don't live there. Uh, so. In the new podcast, I know we're going to lose some viewers. That's okay. It is what it is. Um, different people follow us for different reasons. This podcast is me because I found out how much fun I had doing it. And I like documenting my journey. So the change of this house, what we're redoing in this house will be part of that journey. Um, what I'm working on, I still spin. I have all my wheels. I have everything. Um, RJ is looking to, because I don't have room, we only have seven acres here. We're going to put feeder, feeder cattle out here, um, in the spring. We'll just have about four or five head out here to keep the grass trimmed and, and let them grow up. There'll be roping calves that RJ's done with that he wants to grow a little bit bigger. And that's what will be out here. It's just cattle. I don't have the big barn set up and all that stuff here. I've got a little lean-to type barn the cattle will be able to get in there and eat and drink and get out of the weather so um yeah it's gonna be fine <laughs> I, I just uh, it's so i'm happy and i just know that i'm kind of nervous putting my life out there to you guys um like i said covid kind of made us look at what all we were doing and with me not being at the farm he can't do as much anyway and it was kind of a blessing he didn't want to do the fiber farm anymore i love fiber can't push that on my kid but he did find his niche with the horses and and such so um yeah like i said rj made the, AC, the acra finals we go to that next weekend and with this change i found that i haven't missed any of his finals since this change i have more free time he has more free time but we're still doing all the things we love without all the work kind of downsizing and that so um this new podcast will continue to have an rj update okay and i'm going to call it rj's world then i will have in the farmhouse still which will be this farmhouse and the changes that are going on here um then i've got my in the basket which it's what i'm working on <laughs> and then i've got my on the wheel so in the farmhouse will also include any time that i make soaps or recipes or anything that you need to know 
Um, the other thing is, is with adapting this seven acres for cattle, you will be included in all the little oopses and um, the day we get out and work fence. RJ and I are going to come and work fence here. That's what I'm saying. It's still RJ and I. It's just two different places and it's a little different. It's our norm and I like it. Okay. He likes it. Less stress, less um, tension between his father and I, less of everything, but more happy. And we've actually spent um, better holidays together. We had Thanksgiving, we did Halloween again. We used to do that when he was little. We did a chili dinner and my roommate loves it. Um, then we've done Thanksgiving and my roommate loved that. Um, roommate's parents came to Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, Christmas, my daughter was absent because she had COVID. <laughs> so we're, we're doing it safely, but we are doing it. Um, the dogs that came with me are Hitch, the foster dog who's still looking for a place to go, and Moose will always be with me. He's my dog. Um, and roommate loves both of them too. Hitch gets a little hyper for roommate, but <laughs> it's kind of funny. So let's start out with in the farmhouse. I don't know what order they're going to go in. I will probably get me a little, remember when we first started, we wrote it all out and I will do that. This is kind of an informal. I'm back because we have a class that's going to post for um, virtual wool fest on the 23rd. So um, yeah, and that kind of made me think how much fun this is. <laughs> Oh, well, and I do have a day job. So for those of you who have been following along, you know I got the day job, oh, year and a half, two years ago. Um, I only moved out and found a place and, and set up my new life about seven months ago. So it was probably the first part of July, end of June, beginning of July. So um, yeah, it's been different. The tiny house is going to be finished, uh, but we had to stop because we're waiting on parts for the tractor. It's getting too cold. Uh, January, February is the coldest months in Oklahoma. The ground has been frozen a lot. Um, <clears throat> that kind of stuff. So that's going to be RJ's house and it'll be on the farm. And then I have my own thing going on. So. And you'll be included in all of those. So you'll have to keep up with whose house we're working on and what update. And I will try to remind you so that you see the different houses. Um, I did prepare a little tour of this house. It sits on seven acres. Um, I just did an inside one because some of the stuff that we've already started doing, I want you to know. So here is the in the farmhouse clip for this house. Okay, so there's Moose and Hitch. <laughs> um, this is a den. And right behind me, there's a, a garage. There's my car out there. Um, so we have the garage. This is called the den. It needs new carpeting, new ceilings. It needs to be cleaned up. The furniture has been put together of different hodgepodges and households, but we kind of like it. Um, roommate plays guitar and banjo. So the door that is right there, mm, sorry, new setup, is washroom and where the dogs are kenneled. Um, we put in this wood burning stove. Um, basically, we just had to put in the mat, which you just lay down. We put in the stove and then the, the chimney was already here up to that point. We just put in the pipe for it. Um, we did have to call and have somebody come clean the chimney out. Oh my God, there were so many birds in there. Um, this was added onto the house later on. You can see that this window leads out to the garage. Um, there is some damage that has to be fixed with it. The window right there is the old exterior of the house, but I kind of like it. It's kind of cool because if we're talking, the kitchen is kind of little, but it um, serves us very well. Um, you can tell some of the cabinets have started to be scrubbed. This one we've scrubbed on a lot. This one, these over here are just yucky, dirty. So 
Um, but this window, we find that we can talk through, like when we're watching a movie or whatever. They'll say, oh, look at this. And so I'll run down and look, yeah, um, in the kitchen. Or if they're in the kitchen, they can do the same thing. Um, this is where we have our dining room table. You can see my stuff getting ready for the podcast. Um, these walls had contact paper on them, um, white with little blue and pink flowers from like the 80s. We started to strip off this door, um, the frame. We're just going to redo the whole trim because that trim down there, if you look right here, there is absolutely no trim at all. And I'll explain to you why when we get into the other room. But this is, oops, sorry, this is the dining room. And we have already started work on it because it just was yucky, gross. So my ladder's still there. I'm short. Can't even reach the top of the cabinets without it. So anyway, um, down the hall is, it's going to get a little dark because we already have it scheduled to have a light put in here. There is absolutely no light. So while you're seeing dark, here is a bathroom that we don't use very often. Um, trying to let the camera do. It's just old, dated farmhouse type. And then in here is my bedroom. Um, now the truth is I have some stuff in here that, you know, hasn't really gotten and the camera's having a trouble focusing. Sorry about that. Um, I haven't gotten everything in a home yet. So I store it in my bedroom. Okay. I've got fleece down there. My sewing machine. Just stuff that's moving. The extra dining room chairs from the holidays. Which will go out in the garage when we're done. But my big wheel. RJ has to bring um, the big wheel that goes on here. Because it won't fit in my car. So that is coming. Of course, I've got my scanner um, ladder from, <laughs> I know that's not where you store a ladder, but anyway, it is for me. Um, I don't want to have to go out in the garage and get it. This stuff right here is on the couch, but it all goes in the dining room. Um, no house for me would be complete without at least one of our day's buckles. Um, you can see my little wheel, my traditional there. This front part has the old hardwood floors hitch what are you doing he's just showing off he's being silly and of course moose is at my feet and then this is just an old electric heater that we found but it has a fireplace looking thing so we thought it was cool it stayed um there is central heat and air in this house but we prefer a different kind of warmth so this is the den or not the den the office uh this is where we have everything you know, roommate has half the drawers. I have half the drawers. Computer. Um, I have my laptop. That's roommate's computer. This little built-in was in the dining room. And because the dining room was so small, we took it out and we're going to put it in here. But it's got the wallpaper that was in there. I don't know if you can see that. But it's like 80s pink and blue flowers. But behind it is wood. And we're going to strip that off. And we're going to put it in here because it's just extra storage you can tell we've used dressers as storage and tv trays or tv stands this is still boxes still stuff we have to deal with um also in the office and this is the bathroom that we use the most because it's just the one we've put together okay um there's a shower back there which we both shower so it's not a big deal we took out the other um medicine cabinet like you saw in the other bathroom put this mirror up put a little shelf that that shelf is temporary it's not staying um it's just convenient for now and then of course we added this so this is the bathroom we actually use uh, most of the time so and i know these lights are kind of crazy this is roommate's bedroom we're not going in there um we're respecting privacy but we are going to put it back. You're going to see things like the little lamp there. We found that and I found a dome. Um, and I just really like that kind of uh, stuff. 
this in here um, the only thing that has to be done in this room is we have started the wallpaper was literally falling off so we ripped part of it off and it will be coming down and getting a fresh coat of paint we're leaving all the natural wood trim the wallpaper itself is supposed to be white and it's it's just yucky it's I don't know it's all brown they used to smoke in this house Ugh. so yeah but this set right here of chair and stuff is stuff that we've found it matches and we really kind of like it so I love this little built-in right here um, I have some pictures of RJ and my kids that I haven't gotten up yet a lot of that is roommates family and friends and we're integrating it'll get there it'll have both of us in there um, so anyway that is the house this is the room I'll be podcasting from or you've probably already seen it part of it anyway and then like I said there's seven acres here that we will um, you'll see over time so okay so I'm back and as you can tell I have a different laptop different editing stuff I'm still learning this one's probably going to be like when we first started and here's the little nippets <laughs> so we're going to move on to in the baskets that's the house and like I said it sits on seven acres gonna have cattle here it's just gonna take me time to get my life where I want it and it's still very entangled with the farm and that will always be you guys it, it just it is what it is when I said till death do us part that's what I meant and I'm not going to leave my children to deal with their dad he's got some issues and we're a family and as a family we will deal with everything okay no matter what life changes um and roommate loves my family by the way <laughs> roommate knows the whole story knows why i moved why i work where i work and what i do so knows everything knows about fiber festival um you guys might see roommate from time to time who knows but right now roommate is being kept very private um they didn't ask for this but I enjoy this and I'm gonna do the things that make me happy so all right in the basket as you can tell I have my big um, basket that's just the key cover for my laptop sorry um, I have my big beautiful basket and in it now I'm gonna tell you why I'm putting this in this is a finished product but I just did it I just finished it and it's a gift for roommate um, it was actually supposed to be for Christmas I know I know I'm late but I finished it today so I'm only what two weeks late how many times have you guys started something and not gotten it done on time so um, it is a sampler quilt or afghan I guess you call it and it's too big it's 30 blocks so it's huge um, yeah <laughs> It just keeps going and going it's huge but I did the final um, steel thing and this kit is available through Annie's um, I started it just because I could have it shipped to me I didn't have to go hunt down stuff and all that but this is in the steel colored one um, and it's got mist Donahue snow white and steel those are the four colors in it and I actually have it's the premier anti pilling yarns and it's done with an everyday worsted and like I said it's um, completed as of today I blocked all of them which took me forever and that's probably what set me back because I only have like 10 blocking things and there was 30 of these and then I had to block them and wait for them to dry and so it took longer but it's beautiful I'm in love with it roommate loves it um, and man it got hot working on it the other thing about that kit that I am super excited about as we all know this I still have and this is a pretty big in the basket basket but I have at least one skein uh, one full skein of everything left steel I've got one and part of one and then the um, mist 
I've got one and part of one. Donahue, I actually have three almost full ones. I've got two, and then I use just a little bit off the other one. And then the Snow White, I've got two and just this little bit. So I have plenty to make something else. Okay, so Annie's kits obviously include enough yarn to do a whole lot. And yeah, and this thing is, like I said, huge, done, love it. Uh, hard to get out of the way. <laughs> but then the other thing that I have in the basket, and this I just got off the wheel. Um, last year, I did a make something for me. Oops, I'm undoing stitches. Make something for me challenge because I make stuff, and like I said, that just went to roommate. Uh, roommate needed it, and roommate got it. So, um, yeah, I started a challenge and I bought um, some fiber. I decided I wasn't just going to buy yarn and do it. If I'm going to do it for me, I want hand spun my own work. So, I had got some uh, merino, just plain white merino, um, spun it up. I think I've got 348 yards of this. And then to go with it, because you guys know I don't do anything just solid, and I'm not going to dye this, okay? I still dye, and I still use greener shades, but I'm not going to dye this. This is for me personally, and I love Earth Tone Natural. So, the other thing that I got to go with it is some Pygora. This is the first time I've ever spun Pygora, um, and that's a, it's a naturally almost brown kind of color. I know the lighting is not great in here, um, but I got 148 yards of this, and it's a fingering weight to ply. There you go. So anyway, I am going to make me a wrap. It's just going to be a square wrap, and it's going to have all of this and then this is going to be the trim and it's literally just going to come around with a button there is no pattern that's my driveway alarm yes we have one of those now <laughs> because of where we live um we do live closer to a road and i don't like strangers coming in so we put in a driveway alert um sometimes the wind sets it off which is what it is but i'm also um have a fedex delivery coming so <laughs> yeah all right so I spun this up and I'm just making a square wrap it will probably come around and I'm not gonna do it standard it's gonna be a long square I don't know how to explain it um, I should have drawn it up but I didn't hey okay podcast can only get better after this right because I've screwed everything up already made all the mistakes but anyway it's going to be a long wrap come around and then it's gonna button in the center does that make sense? It's going to be a square. I don't know if I can do it with this. But if this was the whole thing, it would wrap around your shoulders and button somewhere in here like so. Okay, so uh, just that's kind of the shape. This is not, it's not going to be that small. But, and I'll have a big beautiful button or something right there. And this will have brown trim on this edge. So, yeah, that's what I'm working on. Um, now, I do have, so I did my um, demonstration for the Wool Fest. And I guess this is going to be, we're going to transfer, because this was on the wheel. It came off three days ago. So, um, I've just now started, and that's as far as I've gotten. I had to decide what stitch and what pattern I was going to do. And I didn't do a pattern, then I just made, made it up. And yeah and if you want to know what size hook i'm using uh looks here it's my favorite hook so it says us and i hate reading it's a six millimeter so is that a g right one two three four five six a b c d e it's gonna be an f just so you know that that's the way it is. Um, if you count off the numbers for crochet hooks, 
um, it's letters. And Americans don't do the half sizes, so that's why you have millimeters and y'all have millimeter sets and you'll have U.S. standard sets. U.S. standard sets don't have the halves in them. Just saying. Okay, so uh, my presentation during Wolfest is what I have on my wheel and, uh, well, part of it. And I think this fiber was given to me and I think it's just to see what I can do with it based on my own presentation. So this is, and it doesn't look very nice because remember this is, my presentation is processing fiber with your fingers. So this has just been picked out with my fingers and this is, it's very dirty, okay? But as I spin it, I take out all the vegetation matter. That's the whole point of the class is that you can prepare and line up fibers and drop everything out on the table as you do it. Um, yeah, to spin it up. Some of this has second cuts. Um, I'm leaving them in for little bobbles. And if you could see the table now from where I just did that, you'd be horrified. Um, I am not doing it. Uh, we have hardwood floors through a lot of this. Um, some of it's old carpeting that's got to be ripped up, but we'll see what's underneath it when we do it. So anyway, that is what's on my wheel is this. Um, and it's spinning up very dirty, but as you can see, it is spinning up quite nicely. And it will clean up pretty nicely too. Um, I've had a lot of people comment that fiber is an expensive hobby. And I hate when people say that, okay? It doesn't have to be, and I don't want it to be. And we've based our whole farm life on that. So uh, my Wamego friends all know that about me and know that I teach them the easiest way. I've taught them to make drop spindles for a couple of dollars, buy some raw fleece for 50 cents an ounce, and just get spinning. So, and yes, in the presentation, I tell you it's just that easy, and yes, you can do it that inexpensively. So you don't have to have big wheels, you don't have to have big fancy drop spindles, and that's what I do my whole presentation on. So, um, that is what, in my basket and that's what's on my wheel right now um, on my other wheel I do have everything here I don't have the big round wheel part to my walking wheel here yet because RJ is gonna have to bring it in my truck that's one of the pluses of having half interest in the truck is he has to cart my stuff around <laughs> I'm teasing it's around his schedule so it's fine um, but anyway the next part that I probably would move on to is an RJ update, and, but I've already covered that. He's made the ACRA finals next weekend. We get to go and see him, and I think roommate is going to try and go with me. Hmm. So that might be fun. <laughs> but anyway, just consider yourselves up to date. The farm is now closed because RJ can't um, be around people. Just can't. Um, with his health, it, it just wasn't worth the risk. Um, we tried keeping it open by appointment only or whatever, and it people get mad because we weren't open all the time or um, didn't have set hours, and how can you run a business like this? Well, because RJ has to. Um, he can't be exposed to all of that. So anyway, uh, this is short, sweet, not your norm, but it'll line out. And for those of you who choose to unfollow, I understand. Um, it's a lifestyle change and growing this house and this little acreage. Um, I will be doing some gardening. So there will be, you know, in the garden uh, footage. My grow tower is coming out here. My trust system is going to come out here and roommate and I are going to put in a, a a small garden here so there's still things going on and still country things going on but we are downsizing and RJ is so much happier um, it's amazing to hear him laugh and see him smile again because the tension at the farm is not there and that that's a big plus for us so um, yeah 
we'll get it going and you guys can follow the journey on this house there was some in the clip that you saw this had contact paper on it yeah we had to steam that off sand everything and we have this beautiful old paneling behind it and we're not talking the cheap 70s stuff this is solid wood it's amazing now I haven't washed it see my hands dusty we literally are in the process of working on this and getting the trim down and you saw all that in the house um, video so I have the polyurethane up there on the fridge I know it's not the place to keep it but it's yeah it's staying clean but anyway we're gonna put a satin finish on it I've got to wash everything down because there's still dust everywhere we are gonna paint around the window um the paint isn't coming off that grayish bluish country <laughs> i guess so we're going to paint the inside of the window white to reflect more light and bring more light in <clears throat> and then uh the trim that's on the outside will match the trim that's on the outside of all of this we tried to save as much as we could but it looks like it's going to have to be replaced because it's taking forever and honestly it's going to cost like 20 bucks to do each doorway and 20 bucks to do the floor so it's not that big of a thing and the top trim is staying and then all we have to do is paint the ceilings uh, so um anyway that is me um we're just gonna call it straw family farm take two get it two places to as rj updates he will do some stuff um now he did want me to mention that he will be selling because i'm not commercially doing bulks of wool anymore we have the drying rack that is for sale we have the tumbler that is for sale and the picker that is for sale please email him if you're interested in those things we also have a horse or horse a sheep shearing stand that um, will be up for sale uh, we probably have some clippers and all of that stuff but remember we're not going to mail this stuff it is huge stuff so it's for probably for local pickup only or if you want to venture down you know if you're two three hours away i don't know how far people are away but um he will be posting those on the facebook page after i get this video out um we wanted to kind of break it to everyone and bring you up to date that things have kind of changed around the farm and this is not new changes guys we've been off of here for a, almost a year so um yeah these changes didn't just boom here they are they've evolved and i really think that it's for the better um as rg and i discussed this is more of a um document thing for me it's something fun for me to do i get to follow my own journey and believe it or not i go back and watch some of the older videos from when rj was little and it's kind of cool to watch I mean, I watched my son grow up on camera and through the blog, and I love to reread some of those. Um, I still tell some of the stories of the things like when I went shirtless for the sheep. Yeah, got naked in the pasture for a sheep to save two twins that I delivered that didn't make it to the barn, and it was super cold, and yeah. So, um, sorry, checking the driveway, just wind. <laughs> But, again, I don't turn off my phone because RJ is still traveling, so we still have the, the phone interrupts, and my job also doesn't let me turn it off. And now we've got a driveway ding-dong. <laughs> so, if someone shows up, I'll know. But, anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, we aren't putting out some of the personal reasons, but that's because they don't concern just us okay the stuff with his father it's not anyone's business and we're not putting out exactly what's going on with that um just know that he's still in my children's lives him and i just can't exist together the way we were so um hence the changes new house new adventure i'm super excited um i hope y'all stick around i really do because you're going to get to see this seven acres become a small it's not going to be a farm but it will be self-sufficient um there is a shop outside there is um well I, roommate owns a tractor too 
<laughs> my tractor is at the other house, so at the other farm. So, um, yeah, we've already made improvement with the wood burning stove. Um, I still plan to be the self reliant me that I am, um, just a little happier version. So, no tension, or it's not that there's no tension, there's less tension. How's that for you? <laughs> so, being totally honest. But anyway, I will let y'all off of here. For those of you who choose to unfollow, I totally understand. It's a little bit different. Not what it was when you signed up. For those of you who continue to stay, thank you. And we hope that you'll enjoy our journey just as much as we do. Um, and for any newcomers through this with the uh, Wool Festival, welcome and you're hitting right at transition feel free to go back and look at some of our other videos uh, yeah just let us know that you're out there and still hearing uh, still interested i guess is what i want to say so i will talk to you later and we used to end with it's time to get back to work but yeah it's time for me to get back to work i guess <laughs> just on different things talk to you all later Bye.